You may have heard about this signal originally found by Russian astronomers in 19, well, 2015 actually. On August 27, 2016, a story broke that Russian astronomers using the Rattan 600 radio telescope had intercepted a strong signal from deep space, originating 95 light years away from the direction of HD 164595, a star similar in size to our Sun, and with at least one likely inhospitable exoplanet already discovered there, though there could be more as yet undiscovered. The Russians had actually intercepted the signal all the way back on May 15th of 2015, yet went against protocol by keeping it quiet all this time. That was obviously suspicious, and the Russians were under immediate pressure. Media coverage spread very quickly throughout the end of August, some sensational, some cautious. With SETI now officially on the case, the signal is making tons of headlines all over the internet, claiming that this might be the one! But as for whether or not we're on the brink of paying homage to our new alien overlords, well, that part is up for some mega debate. There are a number of reasons why this new signal is being given some interesting weight. Uh, certainly enough weight to spark SETI's interest in monitoring. And now the Russian Academy of Sciences is saying it was a military satellite. So. No detection yet, but look, you know, you can't always be cynical. If a signal is looking promising, we are going to check it out. On August 31st, just two days after the story went mainstream, news broke that the Russians claimed it was a terrestrial disturbance from a Soviet military satellite. The very next day, at 9.07 a.m., a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket blew up during a test fire, just two days before it was supposed to launch. It was immediately claimed to be an accident. The truth would not be revealed for another two years. The signal actually carried clear patterns indicative of intelligent communication. The Russians deemed that classified until they could decipher the content of the message, hence the delay, but it was far too advanced to crack. After enlisting the international community's help, it was decided to maintain the story that the signal was benign, that it came from a Soviet military satellite. Though that story left a lot unexplained, it worked, for the most part, as public interest rapidly dropped. But that wasn't the work of the lie alone. Space Science and Technology Reporting, also known as SST, was given a standard government EC-39 media reset by sabotaging the Falcon 9 rocket, thereby flooding SST media with a new story, dramatically overshadowing the defunct signal from space. By the year 2018, the true nature of the signal was no longer kept secret, for that was when the trophic cascade was initiated. You see, the signal was not meant for us, nor did it come from anywhere near HD 164595. It originated locally, from beings who were briefly visiting our system. The Russians merely intercepted part of a signal from a craft that was not of human origin. We knew a little more than that, but not much. We knew that we were far from equals in their eyes, if they even had eyes. We understood as much about them as a deer in the woods understands about a human being. For a long time, we perceived our ecology as being affected by forces from the bottom up, but only recently have we begun to understand top-down forces. For instance, the Green World Hypothesis states that predators facilitate the flourishing of plants as they reduce the population of herbivores. When a predator is introduced to a new area, not only could they reduce the population of herbivores, but also cause the herbivores to change their behavior, which can affect the entire ecosystem, and a trophic cascade may occur. A classic example of this is what happened in Yellowstone National Park. The gray wolf underwent a local extinction there during the 1920s. The park remained free of wolves for 70 years, thereby causing the deer population to thrive and wreak havoc upon the vegetation. Then, during the mid-1990s, some wolves were brought back into the park, and everything changed. 
The elk altered their behavior for fear of being hunted, leaving behind the now dangerous valleys they once grazed with impunity. By the early 21st century, the trees flourished again and dramatically grew, many quintupling in height, which caused an increase in other animal populations like birds and beavers. They, in turn, caused many changes of their own, which facilitated the flourishing of even more species. The area regenerated as a glorious three-tiered trophic cascade occurred, and a new equilibrium was developed. Counterintuitively, there was a grand renewal of life by way of a carnivore. That was the only concept we needed to comprehend when it came to the extraterrestrial beings. When they saw Earth, they saw an ecosystem that was extremely out of balance. Human beings dominated the planet so thoroughly that we were causing the extinction of other species on a daily basis, while causing unsustainable growth through the breeding and growing of other species for our benefit. Our behavior was even changing the climate. When the otherworldly travelers found our planet, they saw it as a prime candidate for rebalancing. The best way to do that was to cause a trophic cascade by introducing new carnivores to the planet that could successfully hunt human beings and decrease our population, thereby changing our behavior and allowing other species to thrive. That's what they did, and it worked. An assortment of bizarre life forms from distant worlds throughout the galaxy found a new home on Earth and found new prey in human beings. Like many trophic cascades, it worked in unexpected ways. Though many people died, the survivors behaved very differently, not only out of fear of being hunted, but out of appreciation for each other. Old world tribalism vanished overnight, a forced enlightenment of necessity. Bigotries like racism and sexism were a thing of the past, for when you saw a fellow human being, it did not matter what race or gender they were, they were on your side because you were both human, period. Politics didn't matter, religion or lack thereof didn't matter, all that mattered was that you were human. Before long, the earth looked very different. Cities, which once accounted for most of our populace, were now abandoned. Farmland yielded to wilderness. Livestock disappeared. More people actually died of starvation than of being hunted. Many of us didn't know how to survive without someone to grow food for us, or slaughter animals for us. We had become domesticated, relying upon governments and corporations to take care of us. Transitioning back to the wilds did not go smoothly. The otherworldly travelers eventually moved on, though we would never know it. For things like radio telescopes became the mysterious abandoned temples of a bygone civilization. They left behind the creatures to keep us in check, and we cursed them for it. Sometimes, though, I think some of us secretly thank them.